What is Galactic Ruler? Galactic Ruler the game, not Enlightenment, which I did make this style of video for a few weeks ago and have released already. This will be covering Galactic Ruler the original game, and it should be fairly similar with the exception of talking about what to expect from a at the time not released game. So getting into it, Galactic Ruler is a 4x slash war game slash grand strategy game. It plays out on a real time with pausable RTS styled display. And it is essentially Battle Goat Studios Supreme Ruler series, but in space with a 4x flair. It offers a tutorial, which in my opinion is one of the better, if not one of the best tutorials that they have featured in their game since I've started playing them anyway. It offers generation of sandboxes, and it also offers many main menu and in-game ways to customize notifications and things like that. When selecting a new game, because this will be the main meat of this game, you're looking at large, medium, and small galaxy presets, as well as economic, military, and defensive stances for AI. Defensive is like a 4x passive stance, economic is a 4x neutral stance essentially, and military is a 4x aggressive stance, to put it in those terms. You can still customize things more afterwards if you like, putting things into a spiral, changing the galaxy size with even different options beyond what you saw originally, and you can go even further beyond that in the advanced settings if you'd like, even smaller if you'd like to for whatever reason. I question how well that would work, but you do have the option. You'll get to see as well how many different races will participate in a sandbox with this little readout right here. It's entirely based on the size, however. The races are determined over here. Races are preset. I'm sure you might be able to mod more in, but you cannot make your own custom race in-game. You cannot customize how their ships or items or vehicles or anything looks. Their aesthetic is predefined and as well as the way they play out. For example, humans will live in oxygen atmospheres. They will eat agriculture. A plotter, which is my favorite species, can live in oxygen, but also live by default, without text by the way, in a thin atmosphere, and they eat energy, one of four different resources in the game. If you hover over this little part right here with the magnification, you can see even more information about every species, including their life expectancy, for example, showing their birth and death rates right here, as well as other information that could affect mostly the AI, but some of which will affect you as a player. Beyond standard 4x picking a race and determining the size of the galaxy, you could customize other things like habitability, the size of land masses, the abundance of resources, victory conditions, world volatility. This is a Supreme Ruler feature that determines how aggressive the AI will be, not as an aggression metric, just like how active they will be, be it in diplomacy or in war. The higher, the more active they will be in these regards, and the further the bias against a player will go. Difficulty settings as well, base difficulty settings, technology levels, normal for starting out with solar flight, flying around your solar system, none for starting planet bound and advanced for already being able to go between solar systems in terms of tech. There are advanced options where you can customize even more, including turning off space pirates if you want and making naval transport easier via the merchant marine system from the Supreme Ruler series. For example, I would go further into how all of these options affect things in a settings tutorial. It's a bit much just for a intro, like what is this game and what can you do in it kind of thing. Once you have what you want to do pretty much figured out, which I would just select, for example, very large, we can go ahead and launch it up and you'll see it's going to actually generate a galaxy. Every time you start up a new game, it will generate a galaxy. The larger the galaxy, the longer it will take to generate no matter what your PC is, this will still take a little bit, especially if you pump it up to 200. But as you can see on my PC, it's not that bad at all. Although my PC is probably higher end than what a lot of average players might be trying. Once you get in there, you'll see you have, well, your first pop-up and there are plenty of pop-ups. You can determine speed with this right here. There will be help pop-ups to bug you in case you don't know how to play the game. 
it moves at a different speed every time. You can kind of get the idea right here with this rotational effect. You can pause it. You can also raise the speed with these arrows as well. You can press this button to, instead of looking at the solar system view, look at the entire galaxy. Right now, the galaxy only has one solar system because we have not explored anything. This is our home planet. Here are some moons we can survey. This one just looks like an asteroid. It's a very, oh, this, here's a better moon. You need standard 4X scouts in order to survey things. You see, we definitely probably wouldn't be able to settle this. We can also see, for example, the amount of orbiting bodies is probably more accurate that every planet has. If you have pirates on, pirates will spawn in system with you to potentially harass you. You have your own star at the center that you can also see as well. This shroud is simultaneously a map border as well as a fog of war. If I double click on my planet, the first time you do this, it will lag no matter what PC you have. I find it does this, but once it does load, you'll get in here to the planetary loadout if you jump out double click back in. It's instant now that it's loaded everything as you can see. This is our preset home world. This is what it has generated as our home world. We could scroll infinitely to the side, not up and down clearly because that's not how planets work. If we zoom right in, we could see it has generated our capital as well as cities with different production facilities for us. There are four resources in the game as I mentioned, agriculture or energy and finished goods you can manage them with the resource tab here selecting each one and constructing new facilities if i select for example to build power plants we will see everywhere that they can be built green means we can build them red means we cannot if we cannot build somewhere that has a resource chances are there's no supply there as we can see with the little empty bar above the mouse cursor there is no supply there you can increase supply supply is an important thing but I'd rather put that in a supply guide because it can be very complicated. You can automate importing and exporting or micromanage it as you please. There is a state department for managing matters of state such as diplomacy. There is the recon department also known as the land department for supreme ruler will give you a lot of information about hexes and allow you to organize and bookmark locations in the world as you please. There's also research you can cycle through to increase your tech and increase what you could do in the game in terms of making land, naval, air, and space units. This is supreme ruler in space. It truly is. Of course, you have the defense department where you can produce new military units of every single type, as well as customize things about them and even auto production. And you have the command portion of the military here where you actually handle managing your troops. This game, as I mentioned, is sandbox only along with the tutorial. There is of course modding that can and will add more compared to its now quote unquote sequel, which is more as I described it in that video, a paid standalone expansion, really. It's a continuation of this game focusing on campaigns and further updates, not exactly on the sandbox. If this game turns out to be cheaper and you do not want the campaigns that are offered in its successor, then here you go. How further updates will affect Galactic Ruler and its successor? Galactic Ruler Enlightenment only time can tell. But this is what Galactic Ruler is. That is the basics of how it compares to its successor. I hope this video has been helpful to you in figuring out what the hell this game is and maybe deciding on whether or not you should buy it. I hope to continue this game and its sequel eventually with some additional guides to be put in playlists that will be found in the description of this video when that time comes. For now though, thank you guys very much for watching. That's gonna be it for today. I hope I'll see you on another video.